My name is Andrew Gibbons, and I'm a Feldenkrais practitioner from New York, and I'm also a classical pianist. I work with a lot of musicians who come for help with some of the basic fundamental issues of how they use uh, their body at their instrument. In a music lesson, most of the time is spent on the music itself, on the interpretation of the music, and very often there are large gaps in our understanding of how it is that we actually produce the sound. One of the best ways to actually improve your sound is to step back and go back to some of the very fundamental issues of how you actually hold the weight of your body, how you actually sense the weight of yourself in space, and how that translates into playing your instrument with ease and instead of effort or strain. In the Feldenkrais Method, one of the things you're learning how to do is become more sensitive to what you're doing. A lot of young musicians, and even some, even some very capable musicians, tend to sit far, far back on their tailbone. And I have, I have worked with musicians who play at such an incredibly high level and sit just like this. In order for me to, to play like this, I'm having to use incredible amounts of effort in my upper back and in my neck to hold up my weight while I play and I can sit on this part of my pelvis, you can see immediately that the weight of my body is, A, is higher. It's simply higher in the air. The length of my spine is higher up off the surface that I'm, that I'm sitting on. And I can tell you that if you become sensitive, the weight of my arm is a lot less. It's a fraction of what it is when I'm sitting way back, way back here. So how does this apply to piano playing? Well, if you do some simple experiments, you can begin to sense that having a super heavy arm all the time makes playing fast more of a challenge. See, as I move, as I, as I slump, essentially, I move my chest further away from my hand. I must use more muscular effort to have an arm, to hold up my arm and be able to do things with it when I'm here than when I'm here. Now, if you look at my upper arm, if you look at the, the bone that runs from my shoulder down into my elbow, you'll see that when I'm, when I'm in this position, that bone is more or less fairly vertical. It's fairly perpendicular to the floor, right? And as I slump and as I move further away, what happens to that? Yeah, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't hang from my shoulder anymore. It's having to be lifted from my shoulder. And I have to do all kinds of things, not just with my arm. I have to do all kinds of things with my abdomen, with my breathing, with my lower back, with my eyes. Everything changes. It's not just about my arm. It's about, the, it's about a global change in the support that's underneath the part of me that's touching the piano. You go to a Feldenkrais class, you spend time understanding how, how it is that you can lift your arm from this place, or how can you lift your arm from this place. Yeah, what's supporting my, what's my head doing when I, is my head doing this when I lift my arm as I spent so many years doing at the piano? The more intense, the more emotional involvement I felt was, was my head coming out way over and all oh, the back of my neck so sore afterwards. But why can't I spend time understanding that different places on my pelvis allow my neck to work less or to work more? or to work mo most. <laughs> if you look at, at music, at books about how to play the piano, books that illustrate how you should be at the piano, many, many, many of them only have illustrations from here to here. And there's a lot of me that's not from here to here. <laughs> and, if, and if the person doesn't know how to use their foot and their leg and their pelvis and their lower back, they can strain very, very hard. They can work hours and hours at the piano, and it will be, they, and they can probably achieve quite a bit, but they'll have to use an enormous amount of effort to achieve it. And anytime you go to a concert and, and somebody sees some, some really stunning virtuoso, the comment is usually how easy that person makes it look. That person usually to be able to play at that level has spent an enormous amount of time actually separating out the things in the activity of the playing the music that are not necessary. The things that actually are taking away from their ability to listen or to, or to move in a more refined, uh, a refined way at the instrument. And this is, this is the key and this is what people can learn with the Feldenkrais Method.